Welcome to the Creating Strength Podcast with your host, Lauren Kennedy. I'm a former personal trainer, gym owner, fitness and figure competitor, mama of two, wife and Midwestern girl who found a career she loves, but will always be passionate about all things learning and helping women find their strength and confidence in motherhood. Here on the Creating Strength Podcast, I understand that women are expected to wear many hats and be many things in a single day, but I think we are all striving to be our very best, and I want to help you do just that. We will talk about parenting, marriage, nutrition, fitness, career life, and mentoring. You are going to get practical tips, tools, strategies, and hear interviews from other women and moms to give you the inspiration you need to help create your strength. Welcome everyone to the Creating Strength podcast, episode number one. I could not be more excited to be sitting behind this microphone today and to tell you the truth, facing my fears. The thought of doing this podcast got me super excited. I I thought to myself, I know there's a lot of podcasts out there, but this is something I feel called to do, and yet I am scared out of my mind to get this microphone and just start recording. I feel like most of my life I've been able to face my fears, and when I do that, really great things happen. But I know a lot of you can relate to having fears that are debilitating They prevent you from going after really big things. They prevent you from doing things that you feel like you were meant to do. And I don't want to live like that, and I don't think you should either. So here I am. I'm facing my fears, and I welcome you guys to come on this journey with me, and I hope that you'll listen to an episode and you'll find inspiration or maybe tools that you can take into your life and help you out. So... Before we get in to today's episode, I want to talk to you about some goals that I had in 2020. Now, of course, this podcast was a really big one on there, and I kept it a secret for a really long time, but I also had some financial goals. I wanted to start investing. Now, I know nothing about the stock market, literally nothing. And so I started to do some research. I found some websites. I read a lot of articles. I do my typical thing, and I research until I feel comfortable with a starting place. And that's just it. We have to start somewhere. And I knew it or learn how to invest unless I just started. Then I stumbled across Stash. Now, Stash has been incredibly easy to use, especially as a beginner. They have resources available so that you can learn about stocks, and they provide recommendations based off of whether you want high risk or low risk. So each week, I put money into my Stash account, and it acts as like an extra savings account. Pretty cool, right? And if my stocks are doing well, I make more money than a traditional account. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not... I'm not trying to give you investment advice or act like a financial planner, but I am telling you that Stash is the way to go if you are looking as a first-time investor and you don't know anything like I did. Go to www.aloha-beautiful.com slash podcast and click on the link for this episode where you can try out Stash using my referral link and get an extra $20 when you sign up. You can also check out my favorites page where I list up all the other companies and products that I use and love. So let's dive in to today's episode. The focus of this first episode is mindset because I truly believe that to be strong in every area of your life, you need to gain strength within your mind first. Do you feel like some days you're just struggling to keep it together Like you don't feel mentally strong enough to be your very best. I get it. So we're going to talk about six habits that can change your life. I promise that even just one of these, implementing just one is going to change the way that you think. I have a question for you. I want to know how you manage your thoughts. When you have a thought come into your head, whether it's positive or negative, what do you then do next? Or do you even know? Because maybe you feel like you're on autopilot. A lot of us are on autopilot. These six habits can actually help you manage. These six habits can actually help you manage those thoughts better. Create more success and pretty much guarantee that you reach any goal that you set for yourself. 
So I believe it's possible if you want to find genuine trust and confidence in yourself so that you can grow into the person that you were meant to be and experience a higher sense of motivation. Imagine what you could do if you had no more self-doubt. I find that when I think about losing all that self-doubt, it really scares me. It takes courage to face the internal demons that restrict us from achieving greatness. You guys, it all starts in your mind. So what was the last big goal that you had? Think hard. Like the last truly, really, really big goal. Now, did you run into any roadblocks that you felt held you back from accomplishing that goal? Now I want you to think about for that goal. Did you reach it or not? Because I'm guessing if you didn't reach that goal, you did not show up as your best self. The fact is, if you want to achieve anything, you got to address your mindset first. It's the key to unlocking who you really are and what you really want in life. So I want to challenge you and ask you a couple more questions. Bear with me. I promise we're going to get to the six habits. When you woke up this morning, what was the first thing you did? Did you even think about it? Do you feel like a robot going about your day? Do you want to strive for more, but you just don't have the energy? These six habits can actually make you more conscious of your actions. And when you're conscious of your actions, you start to realize those actions that don't serve you. We need to focus on the actions that serve us and our goals and the people around us. We need to show up as our best self for our coworkers, for our friends, and especially our family. So let's dive in to the six habits. Number one, silence, quiet your mind. You got to practice silence to gain better clarity. You want to stay relaxed, but attentive in that silence and I'm not saying to meditate for five minutes. I'm saying practice silence and shoot for 30 seconds. It's not going to be easy. I'm especially one of those people that cannot shut off my mind and my to-do list. So 30 seconds is pretty challenging. So start with 30 seconds. If you think of anything, anything that you need to do for that day, any projects, any meetings, your email, start over. The goal is just 30 seconds. You can do that, right? Once you reach 30 seconds, then add another 30 seconds and shoot for 60 seconds. Eventually, you can build yourself up to five minutes, but you guys, everybody's got 30 seconds in their day where they can just practice silence. So if you can't do this first thing in the morning, do it at some point in the day, maybe when you're feeling super stressed out or anxious and just stop. Silence everything. Put your phone away, shut your laptop off, For just one minute, you'll be surprised at what happens. Now, number two is to make truthful affirmations. I really believe in the power of affirmations because at some of the most challenging points in my life, I have been able to turn to affirmations specifically devoted to the goals that I had in mind. And I believe that those affirmations had a big, big part in me achieving what I set out to do. It had in me achieving what I set out to do. It had a humongous part in me getting over those challenges and finding myself and my life in a place where I sort of thought I wouldn't be, but that's just it. You have to change your mindset and affirmations are a really great tool to do that because deep, deep down, you might not believe it, but you are actually listening to yourself. So if you're saying that you can't do something, then your brain is a powerful tool and it's going to believe that. But if you constantly tell yourself that you can do it, your brain's going to find a way to get it done. So to find affirmations, if you have trouble writing your own, I've got a free resource for you guys located on the blog post for this episode, Aloha Beautiful Affirmations. It's a free download and it is chocked full of some of my favorite affirmations. So if you're interested and you guys need some help, I've got that for you already. So some of my favorites include, I forgive myself and I set myself free. This is a new day. I begin anew and claim and create all that is good. And so it is. 
You are a unique and beautiful soul. I accept my power. Today is the future I created yesterday. And I know to some of you that might seem corny, but you guys, if you've got goals, this is one of the biggest tools you can use to get there. So again, if you're not sure of what affirmations to use, head on over to my website, download the free guide, you'll thank me. Now let's talk about number three, visualization. So I've already told you how powerful the mind is. Not only should you sit in silence and change the way that you're talking to yourself, but you need to visualize what you want in life. Whatever your goals are, you have to be able to see yourself accomplishing them. And we have sort of a fake it till you make it sort of situation because I get it. Sometimes it's super difficult to see it right away and to believe it. But if you practice this and you make it habit over and over again, eventually you're going to be able to see it. And so you need to see yourself accomplishing these goals. And I promise if in your mind, if you think that you can't accomplish it, if you're not believing that you can get there, that's what's going to happen. You're not going to get there. You have to be able to see it. Now, number four is exercise. This one, of course, is my favorite. I discovered pretty quickly after I started my business that working out in the morning was one of the best times to work out. But I'm not going to lie. If you can't get it done in the morning because of your schedule, then the best time to work out is when it works for you. But I know that I feel mentally better, more prepared for the day when I get it done in the morning. So research from Brigham Young University found that exercising in the morning can actually make food seem less appealing. They found that women who exercise for 45 minutes in the morning were less fired up about tasty images than those who skip their workout in the morning. So what's more, the morning exercisers didn't actually consume more food than the other group over the course of the day. So you'll consume fewer unnecessary calories, you'll be more active all day long, you'll actually be burning more calories, you'll burn more fat, and you're going to lower your blood pressure. So those are just some added benefits of working out in the morning. Another study found that you'll actually also sleep better at night, you can protect yourself from diabetes, and you're going to build muscle more efficiently. So I'm going to say it again, the best time to work out is when it works for your schedule. But if you can make it work in the morning, I've just given you a whole bunch of reasons to I've just given you a whole bunch of reasons to get this done in the morning. Now let's talk about number five. Read. It doesn't really matter what you read, but I am going to recommend that you read something that speaks to your heart. Two of the things that I read every morning are one, I read Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. And then I have a second book that I just started reading alongside it called 100 Days to Brave, Devotions for Unlocking Your Most Courageous Self by Annie F. Downs. I highly recommend it. I read a passage for each day and it takes maybe two to three minutes. So not very long at all. So whatever you decide to read, again, just make sure that it speaks to your heart and or your mind, something that is going to help you with a growth mindset. Which leads me to number six, journaling. Again, you don't have to do this in the morning. In fact, I actually leave this one for the afternoon. Never been super consistent with this, but another one of my goals for 2020 was to journal and to start writing down things that went right. Some advice that I got from a friend of mine that has just stuck with me. And so you don't have to take long to do this. You don't have to write pages upon pages. I think that's where we get stuck is we have this grand mindset of doing all these things and we have to write three pages and, or if we read something, it's got to be we read for 30 minutes and that's just not the case. These tools can help you and take a matter of just a couple minutes. I tend to journal three things that I'm grateful for. One thing that I appreciate about where I'm at in the journey that I'm on and then I like to write down one or two things that went right that day. And I think this is pretty important because I know that I also highly recommend that you write your goals down every day. For some of you guys, this might be super unrealistic. Just start with a couple of these tools. But whatever your goals are, writing them down every single day can be super, super powerful. One, if you don't have them written down, 
after you listen to this episode, go write them down immediately, but then take it one step further and write them down every day. That is also something that is incredibly powerful for your mind. But I truly think that all of these habits have incredible powers to transform your life in many different ways. So if you're struggling with your mindset, if you find yourself talking negatively and telling yourself stories, it's time to change that. Let's bring in 2021 with a positive and powerful mindset. So implement just one of these, you'll see a difference. And implement all six, you'll see a crazy big difference. But if you do them all in the morning, I think you guys are going to find that you're more productive throughout the day and you feel more energy or on autopilot. So that's it for me on episode number one. If you made it this far, I couldn't be more thankful that you tuned in to listen to my first podcast episode. If you feel inspired and you liked what you heard, go ahead and leave a review and hit subscribe. I am really excited for next week's episode where I actually get to interview one of my coworkers and somebody that I consider a dear friend of mine who's got some powerful advice for you guys. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to go to my website, www.aloha-beautiful.com, where you can find more fitness tips, nutrition tips, and also some great free resources to help you guys with your goals. And like I said, there is a free resource for those affirmations. So until next time, guys.